welcome to Norway. Though it's early spring, it's fairly green up here. And as a matter of fact, it rarely snows in this part, but it does rain, but we have the sun at the same time, so that is all right. This is Ryfylke in southwestern Norway. It is the warmest part of the country due to the Gulf Stream that hugs the coast and warms the region. This climate makes Ryfylke a very fertile area, well known for fresh fruit, excellent lamb and wonderful fish. Ryfylke is full of beautiful deep fjords and high mountains, as well as green pastures and offshore oil and gas fields. Well, now you can see it has stopped raining, lucky me. Uh, but here I'm standing on a well boat on my way to a halibut fish farm. A well boat is not a fishing boat. It has a large well in the middle of the hull where it transports small, small fish ready to go to sea and mature fish from the fish farm on the way to the processing plant. Likewise, the crew, they do not consider themselves fishermen. The term they prefer is fish farmer. The Norwegians, they have eaten halibut for as long as there have been people in this part of the world. And there are rock carvings in Norway of halibut that date back more than 10,000 years. The Vikings also revered the halibut, believing the fish to be related to the Viking god Baldur, also called the White God. So this is where the halibut spend most of their lives, in this beautiful fjord. As you can see, the waterway is quite narrow, but it's very, very deep. The rocks here, they go up 700 meters, 2,000 feet, straight up. And then they go straight down, as far below the surface of the water as it is above. So here, the fjord is 700 meters deep. Of course, this frigid water and this climate is perfect for the halibut. And a happy halibut is a tasty halibut. Today I will make halibut, of course. I will marinate it with a lot of olive oil, lemon juice, and then serve it with asparagus and serrano ham. After that, a lamb stew and dill sauce and a dessert with rhubarb and a white chocolate mousse. I'm going to meet Tur. He's the guy who runs this place. Well, Tur, you know everything about this, don't you? Yes, I do. So what's the process behind farmed halibut? The process farming halibut takes about five years uh, to produce uh, fish for harvest size. What is harvest size? Four to five kilo is a perfect fish. Show me a good one. I will find a good <laughs> that, one. That I can prepare. Here we have a beauty. Look at that. Okay, 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 okay. Oh my god! <laughs> Come on, relax. It's only me. I'm just going to cook you later. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. I heard that when it's born, it has one eye on each side. And then suddenly, one eye starts to migrate to the other one. When it's born, it's born with uh, one eye on each side. Yeah. And when 0.2 grams, this one eye moves to the top. Okay. This will be perfect with some olive oil and rapeseed oil and lemon juice and stuff. Yeah, I'm looking Thank forward you very much. To yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. And now it's dead my halibut. And this is so fresh that it's still stiff from rigor mortis. Well, and if you're out buying a whole fish, there are a few things to look at to see if it's real fresh. And that is, first of all, the eyes. Wait a minute. Can you see those? They should be clear and slimy, like this. Well, I'm just going to cut this lovely halibut. You start to cut around the head, follow the bone, 
and then you just angle the knife a little bit and you follow the bones, cut carefully until you have the nice filet. Terrific. So here we have a filet of sterling white halibut. Terrific. And this is all I need actually. So now I'm just going to clear the decks and start the cooking. Now I'm just going to slice it quite thinly and put it on, on a serving plate. Lemon and lime, I'm going to squeeze that. I want the juice. So we cut those in half. Squeeze the lemon over the fish and use your hand. That is the most easy way, I guess, to catch, all, catch up all the seeds. And when adding lemon on fish, it's like the cooking process begins right away. And you can easily see that because the fish is turning more white than it already is. Lime juice. And some cold pressed rapeseed oil. Just look at the color of this. Salt and black pepper. So we just leave that to sit for a while. And during that time, I'm going to roll or fix my asparagus. Here we have green asparagus, the white ones they grow in the ground, and the green ones, they grow above the ground. And to think about when using asparagus, it's just that they're very sensitive against light. So keep a towel around them and, and just put them in the lower level in the fridge. Here we have Serrano ham. This is like Parma ham, but it's from Italy. And you can easily see that because the color is more red. It has a more intense red color. And the flavor is also you know, I don't know how to describe it. It's better. So we take the ham and just roll it around the asparagus. And then we're going to put that on the barbecue. Like that. So we just put some oil on the asparagus, salt and pepper, and then it's time to do some nice barbecuing. This will take around five minutes on each side. You just want the ham to turn a little bit crispy and the asparagus to get golden brown. And during that time, I'm going to caramelize some capers. And this is so delicious. You know, the saltiness from the capers with the caramelized sugar. What we do, we take butter and sugar and capers. And you know, the saltiness from the capers Starting to caramelize. Mm. My asparagus. Yes. It might be hard to eat it though, but it's really beautiful. There we go. Look at this. You can really see that it's caramelized. So we just take this and drizzle over the asparagus and the halibut. So here we have the halibut marinated in rapeseed oil and lemon juice and lovely asparagus with serrano ham and the caramelized capers. There we go. Magnifique! <laughs> Come on, Joe. Look at the splendor. How did you? Oh. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Return to the processing plant filled with halibut. And I was glad to be back on solid ground.
in the middle of Ryfylke is a small village Hjelmeland. It got its name from a farm that was located here before the region began to be populated. Land simply means land or farm. Hjelm means helmet. And the farm got its name from the distinct looking hill behind it, which resembles a helmet. This is where the halibut from the fish farm is being processed and shipped all over the world. And as many as 17 large trucks leave this plant every day. And it's almost a little bit annoying, I think, that even a processing plant in Norway is beautiful, isn't it? Anyway, now it's time for some really nice lamb stew in dill sauce. And this is traditional food. And when it's done properly, it is gorgeous. <laughs> I promise you, I will show you that. But first, I am going to start to cut my meat. Here we have the lovely lamb. And to be honest, this is the steak. And that is really not the part that you use for stewing. The best part for stewing is the neck, this part. It's a little bit tougher, but and it can stand more heat, but it's no less tasty. It's really, really good. You know, and then you have the shoulder. They are also good for, for stewing. Uh, if you buy loin of lamb, it's this part, and then you have the lovely steak, and this is this part. Uh, well, at least I'm not paying for this because it's very expensive, and I will feel it in my heart when I'm going to cut this into big tube. But anyway, this is television. What to think about when making a lamb stew? Well, cut it into big cubes, like this. It's so annoying when you're out eating and you're, they are serving a stew and the meat is undercooked. No, 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 no. It's so easy to do it right. You just leave it there and you have to taste the meat. And when the meat falls apart in your mouth, then it's perfect. So let's put it in the casserole, a big one. Now my vegetables, carrots and parsnips and leek. Just cut it roughly. Let's go rinse it. When boiling meat, it is important to rinse it because the meat contains albumin and that is also fine in egg whites. You just rinse it and you, you sort of clean the meat. And then in the end, the result will be a very nice and clear broth. There we go. Put all my vegetables in the pot with the meat, the carrots, the parsnips, and the leek. Fresh bay leaves, white peppercorn, and two pinches of salt, two large ones. One, and two. Put the lid on and just Leave it to simmer for around one and a half hour, and then I'm going to taste the meat and see if it's done. And during that time, I'm just going to enjoy this breathtaking scenery. Oh, look at this, it just falls apart. You can see that? This is how it should be. Perfect. Taste it. Mm. Remove the broth and just leave the meat and the carrots and the parsnip in the casserole. the lid on again and just keep this warm. In the meantime, I'm going to reduce my broth and then start making the sauce. A large tablespoon of butter. Two tablespoons or two and a half of flour. And a half. Pour in the broth. of double cream goes into the casserole. Well, now to the serious part of this, and that is to season it up. 
Um, the secret with a lamb stew in dill sauce is the balance between sugar and a very special kind of acid. This is processed alcohol. It's very strong and we use this when we pickle things. We just love to pickle things. You can't get this in the US, but you can use white vinegar instead. Sugar. Salt. White pepper. We are almost there. Well, I just have to chop a lot of dill. Mix that with the sauce. Pour in the sauce over the vegetables. Now I just have to go and find a beautiful place to eat this. And that is easy, of course. But first, I'm going to spoil myself. Yelmelan today is a beautiful little resort community. In the middle of town is a hotel and spa, and that's where I'm heading. Velvar Hotel and Spa opened its doors in 2006 and has made this part of Rufulke an even more attractive place to visit. You really need to pamper yourself once in a while. This is really nice, and of course, it is a Swedish massage. And I've never done this before. This is not common for chefs, <laughs> not at all. We don't take care of our hands. As you can see, I'm really getting spoiled here. And this is a perfect finish, a nice manicure. my hands. They are smooth and I even have nail polish on them. Oh, this was a long time ago. So, well, let's get them dirty. <laughs> so right here, I am going to make a rhubarb soup with a white chocolate mousse. Really, really nice. We're going to start with the rhubarb soup. Really easy. We just cut the rhubarbs into chunks. And you can buy rhubarb in the store now. They have just arrived and now uh, the skin is really thin at the moment and you can just boil everything. You don't have to peel them. You have to do that later on during the summer. That was about six rhubarb stalks. Now put everything into the casserole. Add the water, the white wine. And this is the wine that we had for the halibut. I think this will work with rhubarbs too. Sugar, one cinnamon stick, and one vanilla pot. Just cut it lengthways so you can release all the flavor. Bring the casserole onto the heat, and then we're just going to add juice and zest from one lemon and the beetroot. Just peel this and slice a big slice of this and add that as well to the soup. And this was for the nice intense red color. Zest. Lemon juice. So I said one slice of beetroot, but make it two slices. Put the 
lid on and just leaves on for around 10 minutes. I want it to be, I want the rhubarb to be mushy. I want it to be a soup, but I don't, I also want to reduce it so you have a stronger flavor. So first of all, 10 minutes and then we'll see. Now to the white chocolate mousse. Here I have one and three quarters of heavy cream. I'm going to take half of this and bring that to boil. Yes. And here I have seven ounces of white chocolate. And a little trick here is, you know when you're chopping chocolate, especially dark chocolate, you have the chocolate all over the kitchen. It's much easier if you just keep the chocolate in its wrapper and you crush it with the back of your knife. Well, the wrapper wasn't strong enough. Put the white chocolate into a bowl. The cream is boiling, but I have to check into my rhubarb soup. Look at this. It's doing great here. I remove the lid now and just leave it there to reduce and just get tastier. We take the cream and pour it over the white chocolate and you want no lumps in this. But if there still are, you can just put it into the microwave for around 30 seconds. Add the cold cream. This recipe is really, really easy. Two ingredients, cream and white chocolate. What happens now is that we're just going to leave this to cool down and then you will be able to just whip it as a normal cream. Now we take the soup and pour it into a bowl and just leave it there to cool down. And there you have the white chocolate mousse. And a large spoon of the white chocolate mousse. Rhubarb soup with vanilla and a nice white chocolate mousse. Hungry, yeah? I'm a glass of it now, isn't it?